I believe you're confusing terms in regard to species and kinds because uh, we're not saying God created all those species. We're saying create, God created kinds. And we're not saying species got on the ark. We're saying kinds. Dinosaurs versus deities, one of the oldest and loudest discourses between churches and evolution, that never-ending battle between creationism and evolution. And the wonder if perhaps, just perhaps, the two might intersect somewhere and tone it all down. One of many things we will address with our next guest, author of the new book, Undeniable, Evolution and the Science of Creation. And who is correct when he points to Bill Newhart's guest turns on the Big Bang Theory as Professor Proton has brilliant truth come to life. He's dead on. And he joins us here right now, Bill Nye the Science Guy. Bill, thanks for joining us today. Greetings, greetings. They did not use you, by the way, just to be sure, you were not the model for Professor Proton, were you? I just wanted to make sure. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, but I was, you know, I was in scenes with Professor Proton which was uh, quite an honor. Uh, it was. Well, I'll tell you, Bill, uh, Bob Newhart, what a tremendous comic. All right, let's get to the fun oh, stuff man, here. Oh, he's still got it. He yeah, oh, he, he's still he's tremendous. I was, I was, uh, we're all waiting for a scene somewhere for him to be in bed sometime, wake up, and he would suddenly discover Suzanne Plachette next to him. But, of course, right, that, yeah. that, that right. would be an inside joke that only certain people would remember. Okay. Uh, oh, no, <laughs> a lot of people, that scene is well viewed on the electric Internet that the kids use with their computer machines. Uh, and those computer machines are, as we discussed, talking about Evolution versus creationism. Why is it? I get the feeling that when you're involved in a debate with somebody over this, that you've got a little wry grin on your face. You love having this debate. This is something that you really sink your teeth into every time, don't you? Well, I'm, I'm trying to spread the word. So anytime you get an opportunity, you take it. Well, not anytime. Almost anytime you get an opportunity, you take it. So this was a case where I went in the lion's den, and uh, my goal was to raise awareness of this extraordinary worldview that's in our midst here in the world's technologically most advanced society. And my concern, you know, these, this organization spends what looks to be about, well, it looks to be somewhat over a million dollars on educating or indoctrinating, rather, young people in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and subscribers to their services. They make DVDs, curriculum materials, posters, workbooks, quizzes, the, where they go along with some science facts, and then the bottom line is, and the Earth is 6,000 years old, which is not <laughs> accurate. Is it, so uh, the concern is the raising a generation of young people that can't think. Is it not possible, though, Bill, for the two to coexist somewhere along the timeline? Well, hold it. Religion is one thing. I mean, the people get tremendous comfort and community with their religions. They support each other, share resources. That's great, but whatever you believe, whatever deity or higher power you might believe in, the earth is not 6,000 years old. No matter how hard you clench your teeth and wish it to be so, the earth is just not 6,000 years old. And so that's just a worldview that's inconsistent with everything you can see in nature. And I just don't want to raise science students who grow up thinking that that's possible. Why did evolution become a bad word in some households, you think? Well, I think it's the troubling and compelling fact of life. We're all going to die. And uh, try as you may, it's really hard not to die. And so uh, I just think it drives us a little crazy, all of us. Makes us hurry, makes us make, uh, make extraordinary decisions that you, then you still end up dead. It's is troubling. The big, is I know, the biggest I know, problem I know. is we just we can't come to grips with millions and billions of years that our minds just can't put our, our can't wrap well, ourselves around that. That's a separate and important problem, but it's certainly very closely related. The Earth is, by the latest reckoning, 4.54 billion with a b years old. So if you say it's 6,000 years old, you're off by a factor of a million. You're not off a million. You're off by a million times. So anyway, it's a, big, it's a big important idea. That is the key to evolution, really, is this idea that, or this phrase, rather, that was coined back in the 1700s, deep time. The amount of time that living things have been extant on the Earth is just literally impossible for almost all of us to imagine. If you are born and start counting one a second, and don't sleep, no crying, no baby bottles, none of this stuff. 
from the moment you're born till you're 31 and a little bit and all, and a little over half you've gone you get to 1 billion well, you I'll can't tell you even what, count to four and a half billion in your life. We're going to count a couple <laughs> of seconds right now. Ask you to stand by. We'll come back Carry after on. a short break with Bill Nye, the Science Guy, right here on Midpoint. Stand by. Bill Nye, the science guy, joins us for a few more minutes, seeking to prove yet again that science was never my best subject, and man, did I miss out on a lot, especially if Bill Nye was teaching me. Hey, Bill, let's deal with curriculums here a little bit. When it comes down to evolution versus creation and all this, is it, is it fair to say that maybe a lot of the schools these days, all they're trying to do is just churn out some great employees who'll just go to work from 40 hours a week instead of really digging in and creating some good science minds and kids that want to learn? Uh... I think you're overstating it a little bit, may I say. The problem is we have adults who have very strong conservative views that are reluctant to let kids learn about evolution. And do you know why? I don't know why. <laughs> evolution is the fundamental idea in all of biology. It's the main idea in life science. It is the fact of life. Yet we have these people who get on school boards and want to have uh, want to introduce doubt about the main idea in biology. And so it's just really troubling. It's unique to the United States. I mean, this is, we don't have this problem anywhere else. Why is it so you know, unique by the way, to the, the United the States? Pope, who's a big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, it goes back to, it goes back to uh, religion, evangelical fundamentalism, trying to read, trying to look for answers for uh, what you would call a creation story uh, that is satisfactory. And they cling to this book that was written 5,000 years ago, translated countless times into modern English, and want to use that as a substitute for a science textbook. It's, it's not my thing. Is uh, it, would, would it be uh, your opinion really then, troubling. and again, I'm just trying to extrapolate what you're saying here, that maybe those, the evangelics, who you will, those who believe in creationism, that maybe they are keeping their kids from becoming smarter than they could be, keeping them down, keeping oh, them yes. less intelligent. Oh, yes. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. No, they're holding the kids back. They are, these kids will not be able to participate in the future in the same way that kids from other school systems, uh, New York, Maryland, exotic places like that, because they will not have this fundamental idea that you can question things, that you can think critically, that you can use skeptical thought to learn about nature. No, they will have to suppress, these children have to suppress everything that they can see in nature to try to get a worldview that's compatible with the adults in their, whom they trust and rely on for sustenance, uh, tell them. And it's really, I mean, it's just it's a troubling thing. I mean, it's at some point you smirk about it because it's so, it's, in, it's silly to suggest that the earth is 6,000 years old, but yet these people work to get their points of view in textbooks and in school curricula. In the world's most technically advanced society, in the I mean, you can make an argument about Japan or Sweden or something, but it's it's uh, the United States is in the world's influence is a big deal when it comes to technology, and so to raise people that can't understand it is just not in anyone's best interest, and that's why it's so important to me. Simple to say, they're just raising, in your opinion, then dumb kids. Not dumb. Kids who, who are unable or uncomfortable with using the scientific method. We are on television, on the internet, using lights that are light emitting diodes that didn't exist, this technology didn't exist 30 years ago. Who's gonna make the net, who's gonna come up with the next innovations to keep the United States competitive worldwide if you raise a generation of kids that can't do physics or chemistry, who can't do biology? Do you want doctors who can't do understand biology? No, crying out loud. I mean, when I state it that way, it's obvious, but it is what I wanted to do by going into the lion's den there in Kentucky was raise awareness of this, that there are people in our midst who are raising a generation of kids that are discouraged from thinking. I think you have done just that. I want to remind everybody the book is called Undeniable Evolution and the Science of Creation by Bill Nye. I got 10 seconds left. Are you relaunching the show anytime soon? We got people in the, in the control room who want to know. Uh, no, but I'm trying to make a movie. Uh -huh. I'm working on my movie. 
Yes. Okay. Buy a carton, everybody. It's a primer, a primer <laughs> on evolution. As soon as the you make the movie, then there. try it. As soon as you make the movie, then call us because we got people here. They're in the media. They want free tickets right away. Bill Nye, the science guy. Okay. It's a pleasure okay. to have you on the show, my friend. Thanks so much. I'll look forward Thanks. to the next time we do it. Take care.